Howdy folks, I'm Southern Wolf of Southern Wolf Studios. Welcome to Samurai of Hyuga Book 2. I want to quickly say that this is the continuation of the sequel of Book 1, so if you haven't played it for yourself or have not seen my playthrough of Book 1, I would highly suggest that you do that first because there will be spoilers from the get-go. And as always, there will be a link to the Steam store page where you can pick this book up or Book 1 for yourself if you wish to do so. And as with the first book, this is a choose-your-own-adventure style text-based game where I go in and add sound effects, music, and attempt voices when I can, just to try to bring the story a little bit more alive. I will also be keeping the alterations to some of the characters' names, so instead of Masami, it is Mitsumi, and instead of Hach, it's going to remain as Hachi. Samurai of Yuga Book 2 is the blood-pumping sequel to the interactive tale that you already know. We return to the land of silk and steel, where fantasy and reality clash together, and tough choices await us at every turn. It's a good thing that we're still the toughest Ronin around. Become a bodyguard, a savior, or just a killer with a good excuse. We'll try to keep our mind intact while we travel down the path of madness with twisted romances and drama at every turn. Love and lust, spirits and demons. What will happen when we can't even tell the difference anymore? That and so much more await in the second book of this epic series. Warning, this story contains mature themes along with scenes of graphic nature. Mature themes include references to drugs, alcohol, and mildly suggestive content. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. Any resemblance of real persons living or dead are purely coincidental. Reader discretion is advised. Now let's check out our stats. We are Okami. Our spirit is the snow monkey. Calculated is at 64%. Perverted is at 64%. Charming and Stoic are at 50%, Protective is at 64%, Finesse is at 63%, and Attunement is at 48%. And with all that out of the way, let's start Samurai of Hyuga Book 2 by Devin Connell. Okami loaded successfully. My first job as a bodyguard couldn't have gone any worse. My charge was a kid named Itsumi, a Shingenjo with magical powers. She had the uncanny ability of getting on my nerves too. We were in the capital city. Yamato, where I expected my biggest problem would be the overpriced sake. And after a misunderstanding with a giant koi fish, the kid and I were on the run from the law. We fled from the city guard into a temple where we were supposed to meet a mysterious someone. And that someone turned out to be his imperial majesty, Emperor Satsuma, and even a ronin like me couldn't look him in the eyes. But that didn't stop him from sending Mitsumi and I on a quest to hunt demons across the land. It was impossible to believe, but not even I was dumb enough to say no to my own ruler. He left us not without leaving his right-hand woman, a Kanoichi named Toshi, but we'd have to exchange pleasantries later as the city guard had us surrounded. As the tensions continued to heat up, quite literally speaking, we escaped beneath the burning temple's collapse into the Kondo slums. The natives turned friendly when our new ally revealed herself as to be one of their own, and in an attempt to disguise myself during all this chaos to get out of the city, I got my hair cut by a spryly grandmother named Ume Umi. Ume Umi did not leave her home. Umi Umi hit us in the closet before a couple of guards came by. They roughed her up, but I took Toshi's advice and didn't intervene. Soon they left and eventually so did we. We headed east and out of the capital. We headed towards Jinjento during the harshest summer I've ever known. The largest city in Hyuga hadn't changed a bit, just as damp, smelly, and noisy as ever, although it seems there was a new opium epidemic. The addiction spread from old grannies to young men. I wanted out of here as soon as I could. But fate had other plans. Hachi used the blade catching technique. I met a street fighter named Hachi who I ended up drinking and gambling with, and with our luck combined, we ended up getting into a fight with a couple of Yakuza. Hachi used a unique style of fighting, using his hands to catch an axe blade mid-strike, but the real handful was in the form of a shapely woman named Momoko. Hachi was poisoned. The woman was running from the Yakuza and they weren't afraid to kill her. I know because Hachi had to be a hero and block the poisoned dart en route to her neck. He was paralyzed and dying from a lethal amount of tiger snake venom. He howled in and out of pain through the night that must have lasted an eternity for him, at least until Momoko slipped him some opium, and we had found the source of Jinjinto's poison. Hachi grabbed Momoko before she fell. The next morning, Momoko was about to jump off a bridge. More than a few heated words were exchanged, but Hachi managed to grab her before a gust of wind turned the doctor into a blood splatter on the rocks below. You requested the Jinjinto guard. Our quest led us to Shiroyama's mansion, packed with the most vicious criminals the underworld had to offer. It was a suicide mission, at least for anybody other than me. I told the others to fetch the Jinjinto city guard for support. Really, I just wanted to spare him an early grave. It started as a fight but ended in a butchery. 
I could no longer hold back the demonic power coursing through my veins. My eyes went gold and my mind ran empty. I enveloped myself into Sensei's forbidden style, the Jugoku Itoru. You did not kill Daisuke. Daisuke, Jiroyama's door guard, made a mistake of getting in my way. I spared his life, but only because I didn't have enough energy to waste on him. The fatigue would do me in before long, and only adrenaline kept me moving. My feet brought me into a garden of poppies where I faced off against the Yakuza ringleader. A stretchy snake oni, a demon I couldn't believe existed, and I still don't. I watched as our fingers transformed into fleshy snakes, forming a slithering nest that I had no hope of defeating, at least not on my own. My spirit animal, the snow monkey, came to me and... Or maybe I just inhaled too much poppy smoke, I couldn't say. But Shiroyama burned alive, as did the rest of her mansion. I thought the battle was won, I thought it was over. But I was a bodyguard who had neglected the body he was supposed to be guarding. Matsumi was alone and defenseless, and held captive by my fellow ronin and ex-lover Junko. A crazed woman gone insane with lust, jealousy, and the Jigoku. I felt an old burning inside of me, and I wondered if it would consume me before the end.